Our final speaker tonight is a writer, teacher, sometime actor and director, and the creator of the website Nanette's Feast. Please welcome Nan Bauer. On. Hello, everybody. This is Frank Underwood. He is the anti-hero of the Netflix show House of Cards. He has literal blood on his hands as he, spoiler alert, claws and shreds his way to the highest office in the land. But of course, he's really Richard III, played by the same actor, Kevin Spacey. Richard III is a relatively concise five-act play by Shakespeare, as opposed to season after season of increasingly tortured writing. <laughs> tortured is a word, however, that Shakespeare audiences often use to describe themselves. The received wisdom is that you're supposed to see the play instead of read the play or do them both. But the problem is, Shakespeare done right, like we talked, and actors, speaking this one myself, he terrifies us. We can't get a handle on the language. Sometimes our directors don't help us, and everybody loses that way, and that's so bad, because Shakespeare was not just the greatest writer in the English language. He was one of the most acute observers of human psychology ever, wrote in a time of terrific political and religious conflict, has so much to say to us, and we got to read him, and here's where we're going to start, with the rhythm. I am a pentameter, yay, said no one ever. <laughs> Iambic though, it's not so bad. Iambic means two syllables, second one gets the emphasis, ba-boom. Pentameter means five. Now, we speak iambically in English. We say, New York, my lord, and now. So you take five of those and you got ba-boom, 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 ba-boom. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks. Shakespeare, very practical guy. He's an actor. They have to learn five to six roles, keep them in their head really fast. So if something's in rhythm, like a poem or a song or iambic pentameter, it's a lot easier to memorize. It's so natural to us because it's our heartbeat. Ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. Or do it with your feet. Ba-boom, ba-boom. Like a horse cantering along. And it's so natural that when Shakespeare breaks it to show us the psychological shift, you'll feel it. Like when Julia doesn't say galopapace, she goes, galopapace, you fiery foot and stand. She cannot wait for Romeo to get there. Juliet's most famous line, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Why did Shakespeare have to do that? We don't use you familiar anymore in English. Thou, thee, thy, thine. But it does show us relationship. We'll talk about that in a minute. I want to direct you to a fantastic website, but I can't say the name because it's MC17. Granddaddy of all cuss words. Yeah, Shakespeare. Google that, and you'll find all sorts of fantastic little things that will help you understand the these and those that I don't have time to explain. Now, that familiar case, which you will be familiar with if you speak Spanish, is used with your friends, your buddies, your sweetheart, but also in Shakespeare's time with servants. So if you got somebody going, you this, you that, thou, ooh, that's a diss. They're saying, you're worse than me, and now we come to even more dissing. My volunteers need to stand up. All right, volunteer number one, take it away. You scullion, you rampalian, you fustalarian. I'll tickle your catastrophe. <laughs> Methinks, thou art a general offense, and every man should beat thee. <laughs> Take that, internet trolls. <laughs> Thank you. Where do you start? Not with Hamlet. Start where Shakespeare did. His first play, probably, was Two Gentlemen of Verona. It's got all the stuff I've been talking about. It's a great story about what it's like to be young and really stupid. And most encouraging for all of us, it has the worst ending ever. For me, as a writer, to know that Shakespeare could kind of suck when he was starting out is so wonderful. It makes me so happy. Then you go to Macbeth, and I'm saying it, Macbeth, 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 nothing happens. Okay, that superstition is stupid. Don't think about Walter White being Macbeth. Cast Brian Cranston as Macbeth in your own head, the original kind of good guy who broke bad. 
Francine Prose, one of my favorite writers, said that when people complain that masterpieces make them feel stupid, she said, no, 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 no. Reading genius makes me feel smarter. Or maybe someday I can be smarter. Let's not make Shakespeare come to us through text messages and tweets. Let's go to him, take our A game, get smarter, have a great time doing it, and tell those internet trolls to watch out. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thanks, man. Thanks, Nan. Well, that's our show for tonight. Um, I just have a couple things to mention. Um, one is, let's hear it for our great speakers. I know it's not easy to get up here with the timing and the, you know, it's, it's a tricky thing to do and we really appreciate them uh, putting themselves out there. Uh, Ignite uh, is brought to you by uh, a nonprofit called A2Geeks. We also present the Ann Arbor Mini Maker Fair, which is an annual do-it-yourself uh, festival in June. You can learn to solder, you can play life-size operation, you can bring that thing that's in your basement you made and show it to people. You should check that out. Um, we can't do this without our great sponsors, so I want to take a moment to thank Workentile, which is a great uh, co-working space on Main Street. If you're an independent or you work at home, it's a great way to get some community. I want to thank uh, Washington Toastmasters for helping out with our uh, run-throughs. They did a great job providing excellent and positive feedback to our speakers, and we really appreciate the work they did with them. I also want to thank Roger Rail for taping and the Zellery Institute for Entrepreneurial Studies for providing this fantastic venue. So let's hear it for all of them. So if you're, if you're around later, we uh, can head over to Pizza House for a post party. It's just a couple blocks that way. Uh, easy walk. Uh, we're going to be upstairs, I believe, by the bar. Hope to see you there. Uh, thanks. And I think uh, Lucy is still selling the Murray Avenue Times down in the front row for a dollar. Get that newspaper while it's hot. Thank you.